What are four reasons you might use a trust? Hey there, my name is Ron Payne. I'm the CEO and managing partner here at Apple Payne Law in Kernersville. And today I just wanted to share with you four reasons that you might consider a trust in your own estate planning. The first reason is so practical and it's simply to avoid probate altogether. So even if you have a will and it disposes of everything you want it to do, in order to probate that will, you have to take it to the courthouse and you have to file it. And you can't do that until after the decedent has passed for at least 30 days. Then you have to wait for the clerk of court to qualify you as the appropriate executor of the estate. And then you have to run notice to creditors, which takes 30 days. And so before you can do anything with the estate, you're looking at three to six months minimum. And that's before you can do anything. Compare that to a trust where you don't go through probate at all. If the trust owns the assets and the decedent passes away, as we all will someday, then the trust just changes trustees. And that means from it being, say, mom and dad's trust to being mom's trust. Or maybe it's now the kid's trust. And the new trustee can step in and immediately say, here's the death certificate. I'm in charge of the trust now. And the trust instructs me to disburse money however you need to. And off you go. There's no wait. If anything, it's you know maybe a couple weeks, but you don't have to change bank accounts, you don't have to gather assets, you don't have to run notice to creditors, you simply can start dispersing. So if there's a funeral expense that needs to be covered, or maybe there's kids and there's needs that need to be met, that can all be taken care of immediately without the waiting time. So the first reason you would use a trust is to skip probate entirely and save a pretty substantial amount of time, hassle, headache, and even money. So you pay for it up front, but then you don't have to pay for it on the backside. The second reason you would use a trust is you don't want your kids to inherit everything the day they turn 18. Let's say you've got a life insurance policy and it's set to go to your children if something happens to you. Well, the reality is that if they're under 18, that money will be placed in a uniform transfers to minors account. And the day they turn 18, Biola, that money is theirs to use. So you left them a Let's say you left them a quarter million dollars in life insurance. Well, the day they turn 18, that money, which after being placed in that account, will grow at a very atrocious interest rate. So now you have $251,000 unless it was invested. And what happens is they get that money. So the day they turn 18, congratulations, they can, if they so choose, withdraw all that money. Now that's what I call stupid money, meaning it allows them to go out and make poor life choices and by the time they really need that money, when they turn into their 20s and their 30s, when they could use that for their family or to buy a house, they may have spent it all on less intelligent choices. Myself, I probably would have spent it going out to eat because going out to eat with friends was one of my favorite things in college. And that's not necessarily a poor choice, but man, if I could have that money to you know help me have gotten that first house or to help get yourself on a good foot for that new suit when you're going out for your first job interviews. Those are the kind of things that it would be important for a youth to save that money for. And by putting it in a trust, you can spread that money out over time. So it prevents the children from getting stupid money whenever they turn 18. You can spread it out up until whatever age you deem necessary and then pay it out once they've kind of got a good head on their shoulders or when they graduate college. The third reason you would use a trust is for business succession planning. Normally, the interest of a business, so your membership interest or your shares of stock, if it's a corporation, would be held by the estate because they're owned by you personally. Where you're allowed to assign those interests of your membership to a trust or where your shares of stock are owned or held by the trust, then when you pass, those membership interests and shares pass automatically to your heirs in the trust, and then the trust can continue to hold them, they can cash them out, they can sell them back to the company, whatever the trust needs to do. But you don't end up subjecting them to the claims of creditors by putting them through the estate. The last and one of the more common uses for a trust is Medicare, Medicaid, nursing home estate planning. It's where you have an estate, but perhaps you're planning on that you may need end of life care and you find yourself in that weird space where you have enough money that you can leave some things to your heirs, but not enough money to pay for private nursing home costs. And the way you'll do that is assets can be placed into a trust 
And that way they are owned not by you. And so then they end up not counting for Medicare, Medicaid, or state purposes, which means they wouldn't be subject to a state recovery under the North Carolina Medicaid Act. Now there's some very specific rules you have to follow when you're doing that. And in order to do that, you definitely want to seek the help of an experienced attorney like the ones here at Apple Payne Law. So if you're interested in setting up a trust, whether it's to skip probate and get those assets to your heirs as quickly as possible upon your death, even for a simple estate, or you just want to make sure your kids don't blow it all when they turn 18 and maybe the trust could hold on to that money until they're 25 or 30, or you're trying to plan for your business succession, or whether you're just doing end of life planning and you want to make sure that all of your estate doesn't get swallowed up by Medicaid recovery, contact the team here at Apple Pain Law. We help families navigate life's important decisions and making sure that the hard work you've put in for your family carries on to the next generation is the business that we can help you with here at Apple Pain Law. To reach out and set up a consultation, you can reach out to us at 336-281-6928 or you can reach out to the team via our website at applepainlaw.com. I hope this has been helpful and until next time, don't hesitate to reach out to us here on YouTube, like and subscribe, find us on our website, or contact us on social media. We look forward to serving you and your families, helping you navigate life's important decisions. And until next time, take care.